Hi, and welcome to Amplify's Reproductive Health Challenge question and answer session. We're so excited to have you tuned in today, and today we'll be spending time answering your submitted questions and diving a little bit deeper into this Amplify Challenge. So thanks in advance to those of you that submitted questions ahead of time. So with that, let's get started. My name is Chelsea, and I'm the Amplify Challenge Manager. We're just gonna take a few minutes to introduce ourselves before diving into the content today. And so for those of you watching in, if you have questions after this, feel free always to just shoot a quick email over to amplify at ideo.org. You can find that email address in the challenge site as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and kick it off. As I said, my name is Chelsea and I'm the challenge manager for this project. And so I help manage the challenge process and support the community of innovators. Um, my background's in global health. I've worked in program management and partnerships before a lot with nonprofits um, at different levels, global, regional, local as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying to create a fun and engaging process for all of you participating so that you can learn a lot and collaborate with others along the way. I'm really thrilled to be working at this intersection of development and human-centered design, and I'm just constantly in awe of all of the um, amazing collaborations and ideas on the platform that we see through these Amplify challenges. So um, it's great to meet all of you virtually, and I'll go ahead and pass it off to Kati, who will introduce herself. Hey, everyone. So my name is Kati, and I am the Amplify Program Coordinator. I've been with IDEO.org and the Amplify team for close to two years now, and I am based in the New York studio here. And with that, my primary role is to support the online challenge process, our Amplify grantees, and our Amplify design teams and projects. So Amplify, as you all know, is a series of online innovation challenges with OpenIDEO and DFID. And then the Amplify team really takes over. And after we select our winners, we work on them with them on their design projects and really bring their solutions to life. So been here and working at the intersection of operations and human-centered design and international development, and really just here as a supporting role. Thanks. And Ashley, introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Ashley Tillman. Uh, so excited to virtually meet you, and you will be seeing me on the uh, challenge platform. So my role is a community manager, so I'll be asking you guys' questions on the platform uh, and providing support throughout the challenge process. And my background, I've worked in government, I've worked in education, and I've worked uh, helping support building ecosystems and communities for uh, the startup and business community. And so with that, I am going to jump in and take you guys through a couple of the quick nuts and bolts of how to navigate the challenge platform and how to submit an idea. So one uh, moment, uh, can you guys, See, uh, do you guys see the challenge process screen? Yep, we're all good. Awesome. So the first step is you're gonna go on to the OpenIDEO platform and you'll see in the top right corner, there's a button that says sign up or log in. And if you haven't created a profile yet, uh, this is where you'll go and you'll see the sign up screen and there's a couple different ways to sign up. You can use your Facebook, you can use your Google account, or you can just type in your email and uh, create your own password. So they, these ways are pretty simple. If you do use Facebook, you might have to go into your Facebook account and um, change the, the preferences. And if you do need to do this, I'll post a link afterwards we'll share on uh, the steps for enabling your account. And then the next part is, is this is how to create uh, an expert profile. You um, can add as much or as little information as you want to your open IDEO profile. But really the, the goal of this is to have um, people be able to see what you're passionate about and areas to connect and potentially collaborate um, around uh, like passions and like work of impact. So you can check out Chelsea's profile. She's done a great job filling it all out. And then the next part is, is navigating to the challenge. So when you go to the, the challenge page, you'll see our challenge right now. It's the second one down. How might we provide comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services to girls and women affected by conflict disasters? And when you click on that link, um, the most important page to start with is the challenge brief and you can also get there by clicking on the how might we statement if you're on the ideas page um, and this is where you're going to get all the information about um, the challenge criteria background information about um, 
why we picked this topic, what we're looking for, um, all sorts of really important good stuff, and a few links that we'd also recommend checking out around supportive uh, resources. And then once you're ready to participate in the challenge, you'll go to the ideas phase. And in the ideas phase, this is where you get to submit your idea. Um, in the top part, you'll see um, this is where we have our timeline for the challenge. It's where we have a little bit of information about the, the four opportunity areas, which you can select um, kind of a specific area if your idea fits into one of those to put your idea into. And then um, add your idea to the challenge. And so there's a couple things here that it's a little bit different with our platform versus um, other platforms. You can submit your idea right away uh, and it'll go onto the platform, but we won't evaluate. You can keep working on it until the final deadline, September 15th. So we want this to be a collaborative process. Even if it's not perfect, put it up there, get feedback. We'll ask questions. We'll help clarify as well. Um, and when you hit uh, contribute an idea, you'll get a page that looks kind of like this. This is where you'll pick the core opportunity area that you're focusing on. Um, you'll pick a title when you're thinking about um, in a kind of the, your one sentence description. And these are areas that you really want it to be descriptive of um, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, really simple. We have some pretty tight text limits. And one thing for this, this first ideas phase is that um, the goal is to be succinct, uh, clear, and concise and to the point. So we know um, sometimes this is harder than adding pages and pages of context, but we really want to um, understand your idea quickly. And then in the refinement phase, there's more time to expand and um, add on to, but this is uh, really important to be clear and concise. And then last but not least, uh, sometimes once you've added your idea, you've published it, sometimes it's hard to get back to. So what you do is you go to the phase of the challenge you're in, and then you'll find your idea, you click on your idea, and then in the top left-hand corner, you'll see edit contribution. And this is how um, you can add or make sure everything's good to go. And so those are just a few quick tips um, for everyone as you're getting involved, but I'll be available um, to answer questions throughout the process and we'll also share some additional links and materials as well. And from there, I'll hand it back to Chelsea. Great, thanks so much, Ashley. And you should know that you can always reach out to Kati, myself, Chelsea, or Ashley directly on the platform by at tagging us in a comment. So you can contact us that way or at the email address that we shared as well. Um, so I will just share just a quick overview of what the challenge is before we dive into your questions. Um, Ashley walked you through the process of how to submit the idea, but what is it that we're looking for? If you've read the brief, this information may not be new to you, but just to do a quick recap of it. This challenge launched about two weeks ago now, and we have just under two weeks left to go. So the deadline is actually September 17th, so you've got until um, that, that Sunday evening. Already we have over 60 ideas that have been submitted, so it's really exciting. Um, you've seen the how might we question that Ashley just shared on the screen. Um, and just know that we're really running this challenge because we believe, along with our partners, that girls and women have the fundamental right to choose what's best for their bodies and should be able to exercise that right and make informed decisions about their sexual and reproductive health. So we're really eager to see what kinds of ideas you have and learn more about the communities that you're working in. Um, if you have questions about what we define comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services as, please feel free to read the brief. We actually have a full list there of what we consider um, part of those services and happy to answer questions about that as well. Um, so as Ashley mentioned, there's a few opportunity areas that we highlight in each of our challenges. And in this case, we have four of them. So I'll just quickly read the, through them so you can have a sense and, and you can find more information online. The first one is focused on adolescents' health and rights. How might we design youth-friendly services and foster broader community support for the specific needs of young people at risk of or affected by crises? So we're looking for ideas that are focused on boys and girls, married and unmarried, very young adolescents, um, really excited also about ideas submitted from youth-led or youth-centered organizations in that category. The second category is focused on health services, resilience, and preparedness. So how might we enhance the resilience of communities at risk of crises to adapt, absorb, and respond to shocks? So really um, kind of a broad category here, and some ideas might consider community education and engagement, female safe spaces, community health workers, um, maybe task shifting or data and surveillance. Um, really excited to see what comes through there. 
Our third category is protecting the most vulnerable. Um, so how might we include and protect the most vulnerable in communities at risk of or affected by humanitarian crisis and ensure that they can access sexual and reproductive health, health uh, services? So um, this might be really specific to your community, but in some places might include people with disabilities, marginalized minorities, elderly people, um, and other people that are facing multiple disadvantages or discrimination. And lastly, our category is last mile delivery of commodities. So how might we improve the supply chains of sexual and reproductive health commodities down to the community level in areas affected by or at risk of humanitarian crises? So let's consider here how to engage decision makers and key stakeholders, um, capacity building and training of relevant staff, um, commodity management, procurement, um, so all of those things along that pipeline. So those are four opportunity areas, and when you submit an idea, you are encouraged to select one of those. We understand that sometimes your idea might cross several of those or might only include a piece of those. Just pick what feels best um, and it'll be fine. And I'll just quickly cover the timeline of this challenge and how that works, and then I'll pass it over to Kathy to get into the questions. So as you know, right now we're in this ideas phase, and that's when you're able to submit an idea. It's basically the application phase. So it's been open for about two weeks, like I said, and it closes uh, the evening of September 17th. So that's when you've got, that's your window to, to send us an idea. Um, just fill in as much as you can and, and we'll be excited to read about it. And then for about two weeks after that, we'll be closing uh, the platform so you cannot edit your idea so that we can read all of your ideas. Um, it's hard to read them if they're continually changing. So we just close that for about two weeks. Um, and announce a shortlist on October 2nd. So really excited to move forward a subset of these ideas that um, will be able to make an impact in their communities. After that point in time, we have a feedback phase, which is something we're really excited about. It's when we encourage and provide tools for you to get into your community and seek feedback from stakeholders. And at the same time, while you're doing that, we are working with a group of technical experts who will provide feedback to your ideas directly on the platform. Um, so that's exciting as well. This is also a phase where you can't make edits to your ideas. Um, it's where we want you to be offline and with your community. So don't worry about getting in the platform then. Um, then we come all back together around October 16th. And that's when you have um, just under two weeks to finalize your idea, make any edits that you'd like to make. Um, there'll be a few more questions and we'll be providing you with tools and resources along the way. After that, we've got a review period. Um, over a month of time where we can really absorb all of your ideas and spend time getting to know you and your organizations and your work. Um, and we'll be celebrating the winners of this challenge in mid-December on December 15th. So that's just a quick overview of the timeline. There's more details in the challenge brief that Ashley showed you. And if you're confused at all, just send us an email and we'll be happy to, to get back to you about that. So um, let's get down to it. Kati, do you have some questions for us from the community? Yeah, definitely. So we'll be going into our question and answer session. And thank you to everyone that submitted their great questions. And I'll direct all of these questions to Chelsea and Ashley. So Ashley, Hawulatu from Ghana asks, how can I apply for the funding opportunity? That's a great question. By submitting to our online challenge platform. Um, if you have questions like we mentioned before, uh, feel free to email us at amplifyideo.org or tag me on the challenge platform. Great. And to build on that, Ashley, Eunice from Tanzania asks, what are the ratings on research, collaboration, idea, and evaluation? These are all features on the platform. How can somebody add points to those areas like an idea, research, and so on? Uh, that's a great question. So you might notice there's something called a DQ score on your profile. We don't use DQ points in this challenge at all. Um, and also, we're not giving specific point values to numbers of comments or likes. Uh, that won't be a part of our consideration. But what we do look for is organizations that um, embody human-centered design principles. So we are looking for um, organizations that show us that they're collaborative, that they're optimistic, um, that they're willing to iterate and work on their ideas, and that they're solving problems that um, are really, truly uh, needs of the communities that they're working with or designing with those communities. Uh, and what that can look like uh, looks really different for every organization. Uh, 
Great, thanks. And we'd like to give Emily a big thank you because she asked three really great questions. So I'll kick it off. So Ashley, how many application submissions are allowed per idea and per organization? Uh, you can include as many as you'd like. And then if Emily is submitting an application in regard to her work in different countries, all with similar idea structures, is it preferred that she submit an application separately or all inclusive with specifics for each country highlighted in the primary application? That's a great question. We actually prefer one stronger idea um, as opposed to several weaker ideas. Uh, but more than anything, we're trying to get to know the organization and your work. So we recommend whatever format you feel best conveys the information of your org, the challenge, and your idea. Great. And then finally, to add on top of that, Emily's innovation work will be practiced in a variety of emergency settings. Their curriculum and innovation is adaptable to fit the needs of their partners in each country with their specific local circumstances. So is it best to submit this all in one inclusive application or separately with greater elaboration? Um, so yes, as long as they're distinct and different, um, you can submit different ones. If not, we recommend combining into one stronger application. And um, the other thing you are able to do is we really do want um, succinct, clear answers throughout the application. But if you do have some supporting materials, there's an, uh, the ability to add an attachment um, if you already have PowerPoints or um, presentation materials that you'd like to add as well. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Samuel from Kenya asks, traditional men medicine has a big role to play in reproductive health. How can the Open IDEO community uh, assist on the excuse me, on, assist on the proposal uh, for this organization? Um, that's a great question. So uh, one of the things that's really exciting is we have over 100,000 community members that are part of Open IDEO Challenge, um, the Open IDEO community. And so we highly recommend to check out who else is participating in the challenge and uh, reach out, ask questions, um, engage each other. We've seen some really phenomenal collaborations um, in past challenges between participants. Uh, the other thing we, I'd recommend is check out our chapters community. Um, we have a chapter in Nairobi that's been really active um, and there's 28 all over the world. And then last, uh, take advantage, advantage of some of the, the tools and resources we'll be sharing throughout the challenge. We'll be providing resources on how to prototype, how to do design research, um, and how to work on storytelling. Thanks, Kati. Thank you, Ashley. Chelsea, I have a couple more questions for you. So Thad from the UK asks, what is the primary criteria for an organization to be selected? Thanks, Kati. Um, that's a great question, and I'm glad you asked that. Um, again, I'll redirect everyone to just check out the challenge brief page. If you scroll all the way down, we know there's a lot of content there. There is one section for evaluation criteria. Um, and being you know, an open innovation challenge, we do strive to be very transparent and open with what we're considering as we think about your ideas that have been submitted. So check it out and read it. I'll go through a few of the major ones here that are really important criteria for the shortlisting process. So. We love to see ideas that are new or in early stages, but still related to the core work of your organization or your team. So you might have a strong competency in one area, but you're experimenting with something new. Um, that's part of um, why Amplify is special and unique, and we like to see ideas that are experimenting, not afraid to fail, and trying something new. So that's one important piece. Um, a few technical uh, aspects here are that we do like to see organizations that have worked in their sector or one of the sectors related to your idea for over a year um, or have folks on your team that have worked in the sector for a year. Similarly, um, teams that have been working in the top context, the country, for over a year um, is important. A lot of the work that we encourage is, um, you know, strong connection to the community and access to insights from the people that your idea might be affecting. So um, we really need to see organizations that have that tie there. Um, you'll notice as well that there's 32 countries that are eligible for Amplify Challenges. They're all listed there for you to check out. Um, so if you have any questions about that, let us know. Um, 
And lastly, uh, organizations do have to be registered in order to um, win this challenge. So essentially, in the end, there are, um, you know, there's a bit that comes out in terms of resources um, that are shared with the winners and um, they just have to be registered in one way or another. We're really open to different types of registration. So we've worked with nonprofits, social enterprises, businesses, um, different kinds of associations um, with universities and such. So just um, check it out. Let us know if you have questions at all. Um, and then um, lastly, a key piece um, for applications is that you're able to articulate your answer to the challenge question. So if it feels out of scope, um, just feel free to send us an email. We can let you know our thoughts, but I'm really excited to see diverse ideas from diverse teams. Um, so submit them and send them our way and we can't wait to read them. Um, if you're wondering what this looks like, feel free to check out past challenges. You can read um, the winners from the past Amplify challenges. Um, if you go on our challenge page, scroll down, you can see all of the Amplify challenges there um, and the lovely partners that we work with. So feel free to get creative. Um, use videos, use photos, use text. Um, and like Ashley said, you can also add attachments. Great, and Chelsea, you get from Uganda asked, are there any specific guidelines on the format to build on that? Is there a specific format or writing or presentation of the idea? If yes, yeah. where can they access that information? That's a good question. Um, I would say that go with the guidance that you see in the platform. So if you haven't gotten in there yet, click that button that says submit an idea and it'll take you to a page with pretty specific questions there. And on each question, there's a little bit of help text that tells you what it is that we're looking for. And that help text um, is really important. So take a read through and hopefully that's enough information there for you. But email us if you do have questions. Um, Ashley did mention earlier the character limits, which are really important. Um, you'll see that this isn't asking for a really long essay or a huge application. We really want targeted specific information um, and just to under be able to understand your idea. So um, check out that help text in the character limits and that should be able to help you figure that out. Great, and just one more to build on that. Ibrahim from Uganda asks, who chooses the best ideas? Great, and I would love to reframe that question a little bit. We definitely um, aren't choosing the best ideas. We're choosing ideas that we think um, amplify the program, we will be able to help them make an impact. So the kind of support that we offer um, is a better fit for some types of organizations and ideas than for others. Um, so all of the ideas that are submitted are usually wonderful and really the best ideas. So um, that's not the objective there. Um, and who selects the winning ideas here? And we, again, try to take a really collaborative approach. So of course, the, the official partners of this challenge are IDEO, including the Open IDEO team, IDEO.org, and the UK Department for International Development. Um, so all of those partners are really key in the decision-making process as we move forward, um, but also taking into consideration expertise from external organizations that are really diverse. So nonprofit, government, private sector, um, youth representatives, um, advocates, uh, a lot of diverse voices there. So in that feedback phase that I described earlier, we get a lot of people involved in providing you feedback. It's pretty transparent. It's all um, in an effort to help ideas grow. So it's not about critiquing or you know, saying what's wrong or right. It's just about exploring together and learning more. And so um, we bring a lot of people together to, to do that. Great. I'll pass it over to Kati. Katya, are there any other questions you got for me? Yep, I do. So I'm gonna read a list of very specific questions, Chelsea, and then um, I'll just have you go ahead and answer them. So Everest from Rwanda asks, how might we uh, challenge cultural stigmas around menstruation? Fad from the UK asks, how might we prevent the loss of young children who, rep who represent um, our Democratic Republic of the Congo? Tembizo from South Africa asks, how might we use qualified people, such as university professors, to bring about the solutions that we often come across in our lives and address corruption in the governments that mislead countries? Yeah, thanks, Kati, for sharing that. And thank you to those of you that submitted those specific questions. Um, these are really great examples of um, context-specific questions that we hope the community in this challenge will help to answer. 
So um, as we introduced ourselves earlier, you'll see that we have experience and backgrounds in um, you know, social impact and innovation, but we're really the facilitators of this challenge process um, and aren't here to answer those kinds of questions. So we really believe that those answers will come from your communities. Um, I do believe that other uh, community members in the Open IDEO platform will be able to help answer those with you as well, alongside you. Um, we encourage you to ask for feedback on your proposed solutions, um, connect with partners, connect with people in the communities, um, and you'll learn a lot and I think um, be able to submit some really great ideas. Um, but yeah, we definitely do not claim to have sort of that context specific um, situational knowledge there in, in each of your communities. So um, eager to learn from you and encourage you to check out what other participants on the platform are working on. If you scroll through, um, it is, of course, open, so you can see all the other submissions um, and read through and see if there's other people working in your regions or in your sector, um, and hopefully you can collaborate there. Thanks, Kathy. So we have two questions from Karima from Tajikistan, and she asks, uh, how can she sign in and submit an application if she's facing technical difficulties? Is there another way to submit a proposal? Yeah, good question. Um, because, of course, we'd like for all the applications to be open and for people to see, we don't accept private applications or over email or anything. Um, if you're experiencing technical difficulties, please email us and we would love to work through that with you. If in the end um, there's something that prevents you, like internet access or another difficulty in your area, um, we'll definitely accept it. We'll get it up on the platform. We can help you with that. Um, so just email us so we can figure that out with you and um, yeah. Great. And to add, Karima is working with a team of professionals who have really rich experience working in different uh, sectors such as health, social, and legislative areas. And they have really great ideas to implement and improve the livelihoods of women and children, but they just started to work as an independent NGO and have, don't quite meet that one year of experience can they still submit an idea and participate? Yeah, I'm really glad you asked that actually. Um, yes, we do hope that you participate. And um, it sounds like you have a lot of experience. So I think um, this is a great question to sort of clear up what we mean there about years of experience. Um, if you're a registered NGO, which it sounds like you are, you're totally eligible. We don't have um, criteria about how long you've been an organization. That doesn't kick you out of the running for any reason. Um, the one year of experience just means that you as a team, as a group, at least someone on your team has had a year of experience working with women and children or in the health system. Um, and it sounds like you do have that and you have plenty of that. So we hope that you participate and it's really great to hear about the diversity of perspectives on your team. Um, so definitely apply. Um, and yeah, let us know if you have other questions about that. All right, thank you, Ashley and Chelsea. So I also just wanted to give a big thank you to Joel from Kenya and Zamani from Nigeria for their notes and excitement about working in their respective countries, particular to this challenge. So thank you to everyone that submitted their great questions to us. And if you have any additional follow-up questions or anything else that we can help assist with during the challenge, please email amplify at ideo.org. And Chelsea, I'll let you take it away. Great, um, so moving forward after the ideas phase, just want to repeat again, um, it'll close on September 17th. And after that, it'll be a bit of a quiet period of time as we review all of your ideas. So um, if you're in the platform, you're signed up to get emails from us and we'll be in touch with you over the course of the challenge to send you updates about what's going on. But look out for the short list to be announced on October 2nd um, and check out the phases to come on the challenge brief. Um, Otherwise, I actually wanted to turn it over to Kati a little bit and ask you a few questions um, from your perspective on the Amplify team as participants think about what's, what's to come in the future and what are the opportunities from this challenge. So um, focus on what's coming next. Kati, what can people win from this challenge? Yeah, definitely. So we announced the winners on December 15th, and then we are going to kick off with the Amplify team 18 months of design support. So this could be known as technical support, such as communications design or service design, business design, product, you name it. And we really tailor it to the needs of the organization and their particular idea. 
So it's such a great time with us. And then in addition to that, um, each of the winners win a share of 500,000 USD. So typically in the past, we selected around five ideas and each of these participants and winning ideas receive about 50,000 to 100,000 in grants. To kick it off on that 18 month journey with the Amplify team, we have a four day human centered design workshop. And so we really dive deep into the methodology, the practices, we unpack your ideas. And this is where you get to work really closely with the Amplify design team members. So with that too, you also get to be a part of the Amplify community and family. So we have a number of cohorts dedicated to their particular challenge. So that could range from agricultural innovation on our fifth challenge that could range to family planning and health as well. And um, we really get to be a part of this vibrant community that we've built up here over the past couple of years. So in addition, um, if you have any questions about past Amplify winners or grantees or what their experience is like, we share all of those stories on our website. So you can look at the Amplify website, both on OpenIDEO as well as our IDEO.org website, and there'll be a much more uh, detailed and illustrative case examples of what a Amplify grantee and winner might look like and the types of support that they received from us, the team members here. Awesome. Yeah. And those stories are really lovely to read too. It shares a little bit more about what kind of that human centered journey could look like for, for the winners. Um, great. So we have one last question and Kati kind of drawing inspiration from how Amplify works as a program with the folks in the portfolio. Um, what advice do you have for people who look at their idea and they're really not sure about how to get feedback, how to improve it? What are some things that they could think about doing as they participate in this challenge? First of all, we love feedback, 100%. So to that, one of like the best ways to get feedback is just to get out there and do it. Get your hands dirty, ask questions, get out in your community and really interact with your people. And we love to hear those stories as well. So if you can somehow incorporate that, those experiences or different interviews or questions you've tested, feel free to include that into your application as well as on the comment section of your idea as well. We definitely take that into account and really look at those experiences thoroughly because feedback is at the core of our work. Um, and then in addition to that, we do have a couple of helpful tools to get you in the right headspace for gathering feedback. So we have a human centered design mindsets and you can find that on the challenge brief page. So these mindsets that we really like to kind of accentuate are first empathy, optimism, embrace ambiguity, make it, learn from failure, creative confidence, and then iterate, iterate, iterate. So you can find all of these useful tools on the Open IDEO Amplify page and on the challenge brief and in the additional resources features on the platform. So if you have any additional questions to that, give us an email and please refer to all of those tools that we've created for you on the platform. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kati. And thank you for those of you that have watched um, with us today. We hope that this has been helpful and it's been fun to get to know who's behind the challenge and who's working on this with you alongside you. Um, so thanks for journey, being on this journey with us. Um, we're excited to learn from you as you submit your ideas. Go ahead and get them up there. They don't have to be final um, when you get them up there. Um, if you do have any other questions, send us an email. Um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, remember, the ideas phase deadline is on September 17th. Um, and again, thank you to Kati and to Ashley for joining us, as well as the over 15 people that did submit a question and wanted to learn more about the challenge process. So that's it for today. Um, you'll see another office hour coming up um, in a later phase in the challenge, which we'll be able to collaborate with you on and get you on the phone as well. Um, so best wishes for now, um, and we'll see you in the platform. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.